In this video, we take a look at interior lighting in Octane Force Cinema 4D. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and show you at least three approaches that you can take for interior lighting in Octane. So let's get started with the first approach, which is a combination of a white texture environment and a direct light. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Octane for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 20 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Octane for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. So I have applied this light gray standard surface material to all the objects in the scene. We are using ACES, but everything else is at its default and we'll adjust them as we go through the lesson. Let's open up the live viewer and start a render. So the default white environment is lighting the scene. Let's open up the Octane settings window. Go to the settings tab, environment tab and change the default environment color to black. Now there is no light sources in the scene. From the objects menu, let's add a new texture environment, which by default adds a white dome to the scene. Next, let's get back to the Octane settings window and change the kernel to path tracing for a realistic render. And let's lower the max samples to 1000s for now as we are working on the scene. Next, select the environment tag and let's increase the power to around six. So that is the first step that gives us a nice overall soft lighting to work with. Next, I would like to adjust the diffuse depth parameter under the kernel tab. The diffuse depth parameter by default is set to 16. This parameter controls how many times a light ray can bounce back and forth in the scene from diffuse surfaces. At 16, the scene seems to lack any contrast because the light rays are allowed to move around in the scene for many times. But if I lower the diffuse depth to something like five, so the light rays would be stopped after five bounces, we get a more balanced scene with more contrast. Normally a value of four to six produces more realistic shots and also helps with the render time. But there are cases that you actually need to increase the diffuse depth. Uh, we will talk about diffuse depth in the rendering section of the course more. If I make sure alpha channel is enabled in the Octane settings and also in the live viewer, you can enable alpha channel from the options menu. We can see the alpha here, or we can actually take a look at the alpha channel from the kernel switcher dropdown. So you can take your render to Photoshop, After Effects, Fusion, or any other post-processing app and simply place your desired background picture behind the windows. For now, let's disable alpha channel in the live viewer and also in the Octane settings window. Now it's a good time to talk about portal material and what it does. You notice the render is a bit too noisy. The reason for that is the huge spherical dome, which is the white texture environment that encompasses the entire scene. And Octane tries to compute the sampling for that whole sphere around the scene. And this small portion of the environment that we see through the windows where the light rays enter the room would get a tiny percentage of that sampling for the entire dome light. So we get a noisy render. Using portal material, we can guide the sampling process for the environment and tell Octane where we want to focus our calculation and sampling on. And to do that, you put plain objects behind your windows or any other opening, assign a portal material to them, and they would tell the environment to focus its sampling through them and into the interior scene. Render engines are starting to become more intelligent and some of them have already ditched portals and do that on their own. You just need your environment and the render engine will take care of the rest. Hopefully Octane follows suit soon. Now, if I just store the current render buffer, I have this plain object called portal. Let me unhide it and enable it. 
it is placed behind the windows. Let's create a new Octane portal material from the material manager and assign it to the portal object. Now that we have our portal properly in place, we can wait for the render to be finished. The render is finished in the same amount of time and if I compare it to the previous render, we can clearly notice the render is cleaner. So the same render time but a cleaner result thanks to portals. Let's disable comparison for now and get back to a live render. Now we can add an octane direct light to represent our sun. So let's add one to the scene. Now we can rotate the direct light and decide on how we'd like the light to shine through. In this case, let me set X rotation of the light to around negative 10 degrees, Y to 45 degrees and Z to negative 10 degrees. The sunlight does not impose its presence, it's a bit too weak, so let's increase its power to something around 9. The spread angle is set to 0.5 for the direct light, so we will get realistic soft edges for the shadows. And finally, to get a tad warmer colors from the sun, we can lower the temperature to something like 5000 Kelvin. You can use warmer colors or cooler tones depending on your scene and taste. Now let's go for a quick final render. I'm going to open up the Octane settings window. We can start increasing the max samples until we see a clean enough render. Let me set it to around 4000 max samples for now. Not enough for this interior scene, but enough for now. Then select the Octane camera tag, go to the camera imager tab. Enable it. If it is not, then enable AI Denoiser and make sure the noise on completion is enabled as well. So the denoiser will be applied only when the render is finished. Now we can wait to see what we get. So here is the render which took around three minutes and it is quite clean with the denoiser pass. It might be a bit too flat, but we can take care of that in post and add a bit more contrast. So that is the first setup. Let me select the Octane Sky and the Direct Light. Press Alt-G to group them under a null. Now hide the null and rename it to Lighting Setup 01 and let's lower the max samples back to 1000 samples. Let me also make sure that the noiser will work interactively while the render is going on by disabling the noise on completion and setting the denoise interval to maybe 3 seconds. The second method involves a simple Octane Daylight system. So let's add an Octane Daylight from the Objects menu. And let's place the sun at the same position like the previous setup. And to do so, I have this helper null 01, which is placed and oriented based on the direct light in the previous setup. So let's just put the daylight under that null and zero out its rotation. Then you can get it out. Now select the daylight tag, increase the power to six and sun intensity to around two. Obviously, you would change these values depending on your scene. So this setup results in a bit more colors and tones added to the render depending on where the sun is. Now, if I lower the sun a bit by setting the pitch value at around negative 2.5, obviously, you can change the sky model to Nishida to get more realistic results. We will get a lot warmer and darker tones. I can go even lower, maybe negative one. Let's set it back to around negative 15. 
So this setup gives you more flexibility compared to the previous setup and the daylight system colors will give you richer tones. Obviously, we can simply replace this boring background with a much more interesting skyline or sky texture in post or right here like we learned in the previous lessons when discussing environments quite easily. And that's it. We'll skip the final render for this one. You can render it on your own. Now let's create a new null and name it lighting setup 02. Put the direct light under the null. Turn off the null and that would turn off the daylight. Let's take a look at another approach using HDR environments and direct light. And this method will give a bit more to work with because you can use different HDRIs and get very different overall tone and feel. So let's add a new HDR environment. Using the image texture node, let's load this, the sky is on fire HDRI. We can increase the power to around two and set rotation X to 0.8. And now we can introduce direct light to the mix. Let's try another HDRI before that. And this time load this sky sunset HDRI. And this adds all of the blues from this HDRI. For another look, we can increase the power of the HDRI environment. And now we have introduced all of the colors from this particular HDRI to the scene and you can experiment with a few others. Next, load this Fright Station HDRI and increase its power to 10. Set the rotation X to 0.7 and this is a nice look too. If we wanted to, we can introduce back the direct light. So let's me create a copy of the existing direct light from the first setup and get it out of that null. And now we can rotate the direct light to match it with the sunlight from the HDRI image. The precise values that I want here would be 5.04 for X rotation of the direct light. 35.8 for Y rotation and negative 8.15 for Z rotation. And that's our beautiful render. Obviously you need to use some common sense. You don't have to use a direct light with an HDR image all the time. It's not always sunny. So you can stick with a simple HDR image and drive your lighting completely from that and don't use direct light at all. And if the HDR adds a bit too much color and you want to rein it in, simply open the node editor for the HDR environment, add a color correction node after the HDR environment and lower the saturation a bit or completely to zero. Even if you lower it to zero to get a black and white HDRI, it still adds an interesting tone difference to the lighting compared to a simple white texture environment. For now, let's keep the saturation at one. Let's select the HDRI environment and the new direct light. Alt G to group them under a null and rename this null to lighting setup 03. So in this video, we learned about interior lighting in Octane for Cinema 4D. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.